Hello people of the internet, it's Amanda and if you're new here on my channel, I usually talk about Japanese dramas, movies, entertainment. Sometimes I tap into other Asian pop culture topics as well and for today's video, we're going to be talking about a Filipino horror film. Now this one has actually piqued my interest ever since I first heard about the premise because I wasn't even aware that this was a thing. Um, but I wasn't able to catch it in the cinemas because I was traveling around the time that it was available. So I was really happy when they decided to put it on Netflix. I'm talking about Maliari. Now, Maliari is actually based off of a real historical figure um, of the same name, like Severino Maliari, who is a parish priest in the 1800s. And he was said to be the first recorded serial killer here in the country. I'm not sure if you have others. I'm just not aware of that particular like thing here um i do think that filipinos are naturally marites or gossipers so it's kind of like like we're easily suspicious about certain people to the point that i don't think we've had like actual cases of serial killers in recent history that i'm aware of but i could be completely wrong but anyways so according to history maliari killed over 57 people um and he has like as with any serial killer he has a theme to it like sinners if you will but this was years and years before jack the jack the ripper was even a thing in the west so that's a little bit of like the historical reference for the film but obviously they took a lot of fictional liberties with the way that they adapted it into this particular movie and that's what we're going to be discussing later in today's video um but overall just to discuss this i really don't talk much about Filipino horror films here on my channel, but I have several that I actually really like just personally. Number one with the classic Feng Shui with Chris Aquino. Really, really love how that, like how they created that. I think it's really smart the way that they weave the narrative of that. Um, another thing which is from the same writer as Maliari, which is Corazon Ang, Un Ang Unang Aswang. Um, so when I found out that it shared the same writer as this film, I kind of like had a sense of this like period piece horror type of film and why it kind of like worked in terms of storytelling wise. Um, what are some of the other things? I think Seclusion is also another thing that I really, really liked. Um, Sukob, another classic thing, another classic Filipino horror film. Um, this one particular shake, rattle, and roll story that I think everyone just knows, the one with the LRT plot. So that one, I completely forgot about the title, but those are some of like the things that I do think are really, really well-made narratives. There's also this one movie, I completely forgot if what's the t what the title of it is but it's a movie with Kim Chu and um Vilma Santos and they went to this faith healer and everything just went crazy after that so that's another film that I really like especially when it comes to just the effects of it um which will also come into play in terms of my discussion of why I like Maliari in some parts um for this entire review but just to give you a glimpse of you know just the stuff that I like when it comes to Filipino horror films. Now, I do, I do think that in general as well, because the Philippines is such a Catholic, like a majorly Catholic country, but at the same time, we're also filled with so much superstitions and urban legends and all these other things. That kind of mix, like religion plus the idea of, I don't know, just these, these, these creatures, um, it makes for something it makes for this play of fear of the familiar because you kind of like just join these elements together and for some reason you don't have to explain a lot of the lore to the audiences and you can just dive right into the fear factor of it um but i don't know like i also love some smart storytelling when it comes to my horror films um so it's just finding that right balance and i'll be talking more about how these criterias if you will kind of like fit into how i enjoyed maliari and some of the things that i didn't like about it as well um what else okay so before we kick things off i just want to say i'm not a like a professional reviewer my type of reviews usually just look like this where i talk to the audience as if i'm sharing my opinions on a film with a friend so if you're here for super critical 
like reviews and stuff like that this might not be the place for you but without further ado if you're just ready for this type of conversation then let's get to it jump into the actual like my actual thoughts on the film let's briefly talk about the plot without really spoiling anything now first off saying that Maliari is a serial killer I don't think that's a spoiler because that's basically like the promotion and the premise that they went with for this movie because that's what the historical figure that it was referencing um to was like that's the story of Severino Maliari. But what I like about this is they actually divided it into three different timelines that kind of like converge and that also plays into the part like the play of the narrative. It happens with the Severino Maliari storyline which goes around 1780 something up until the 18 um 1800s from when he, he became the parish priest and when he was living. And then um the second one is during world war ii and the other one is like the present timeline now for all three characters that are interconnected um they're all played by piolo pasquale um and it kind of like plays three different characters so severino malari john ray malari who is the um world war ii kind of like representative in the narrative and lastly like the modern iteration would be jonathan or john um now they kind of like connected because again it, it's like obviously with the casting choice it shows that they like john and also john ray is the descendant of severino maliari now you kind of like see converging storylines it starts off with john um with his fiance agnes and agnes is in the hospital and it it quickly kicks us off in the scene where he was begging so much to like want to save her because she's in the hospital in a critical state and then he um he was so desperate that he goes into this measure of finding a cure for her and then you kind of like jump into the storyline of he going back to the province where the the original Maliari family was from um, and a lot of people were really cautious because of the family history of the Maliaris and then like the killings restart all over again because of like when John returned to his hometown. And that's basically like the premise of that. It jumps into, you know, the story of Severino Maliari and his like him being a parish priest at the time and his love for his mother, who is ironically and quite realistically sometimes with how it is just being in a wildly, widely Catholic country. You have, you know, like his mother um, who is a devotee of the church but at the same time also very prejudiced um, in multitude of ways and it also shows that they kind of like um gather this this family who will be who's kind of like a servant in their household and who vows to serve up until generations later on to serve their family so that's kind of like the gist of it now um i wouldn't dive much deep into the details because i do think that the storytelling of it all or the intentions and the motive of what's happening here is kind of like a part like part of the plot and just mainly the narrative is john trying to look for this cure to help agnes um, his his fiance to be cured from that and tracing back his history when it comes to the legend of the Maliari killings has something to do with you know the cure that he's looking for that's basically the premise of the film um, and I think just overall they did a good job in terms of weaving these three narratives not just because they cast the same actor Piolo for you know interweaving these like three different narratives and who he's playing in what particular timeline but I think just it's well explained in a sense that you kind of like are familiar with the idea of Aswangs, Malignos or these other urban legend characters and at the same time the religious aspect of it um, and why there's like an ethical and moral conflict between Severino Maliari and his profession and what he's actually doing. Um, this isn't 
I like that the film doesn't really glorify what he did, but rather it was really kind of like this manifest. It was really this representation of the evil that went into the action or the act of doing what he did. And at the same time, even in the future occurrences of the um, of the killings, uh, they don't glorify it as well. They really show it as this gruesome act that is really evil and all these other things. So, yeah. And I like that just overall, I think the casting is really, really good. So with Biolo, um, I did a good job in terms of being the pivotal character of the film. Um, but at the same time, JC Santos and Janela Salvador, um, among like the other characters in the, in the movie, are good additions as part of the supporting cast simply because of how the story centers around their characters as well. I wouldn't spoil, again, I wouldn't spoil anything about them, but I do think that, especially with JC Santos in the last bout of the film, I think he did a phenomenal job um, and he really took the cake there for me um, when it comes to his performance. Um, now, with all that said, I do think that number one, so I heard, I, I read somewhere that this film actually won a local award for its editing and um, special effects, which I agree. I do think that the special effects is really, really good. I actually enjoyed it. Um, I'm not really a stickler for like super, super hyper crazy special effects. Like I like, I just understand how it can be a real, a real, hard job to make something look flawless especially when it's a horror film and you're also not playing much into just having dark atmospheres to hide the special effects this one had a lot of moments where it's natural lighting or bright light um, lighting but even then the special effects are really, really good and i really, really enjoyed that um, those are the things that i really like with um, the other films that i mentioned previously as well like it plays into more of like a realistic i'm not sure if they used mostly prosthetics for this film as well because i tried to look for production notes like quick production notes but i couldn't find any but from what i know like with seclusion before they didn't use special effects but usually just makeup and camera work for the um for the um, effects for that particular film i'm not sure with this one but even so like the special effects especially with the horror scenes are really really good i really enjoyed it even with the shifting in the eyes so there are scenes in this in this film where the eyes kind of like shift depending on you know the maligno or aswang element of the narrative and i don't know they just did that like they've done that a lot seamlessly multiple times in this film with Biolo and the other characters who I will not mention because again spoilers but you would know <laughs> you would know once you see it um, some of the things that I didn't like however and while I praise it for special effects some of the things that I didn't like editing wise is number one and I don't know if this counts as editing or something but I keep laughing about how in the Severino Malari persona, Piolo has to wear like a wig. Um, and his both in the Severino and the John Ray persona, he has to wear fake facial hair as well. That wasn't seamlessly done well, or it looked too fake, in my opinion, like this mustache and his beard for those two personas. But I didn't really mind it as much as the wig that they had him wear as Severino the lace was clearly like showing i don't know if i just watched too much rupaul's drag race to the point that i noticed that but there was really like this line here but obviously i don't know it's just a minor detail that i noticed the rest of the stuff is forgivable in my opinion i just find it really funny that i can see like part of his lace or where the division of his actual hairline and the wig was so that's one thing um, and another thing is just editing wise, I do think that this film would have benefited from a little bit more editing in terms of runtime. So 
The runtime of this film is, I think, around two hours or so. But I think some parts they could have cut easily or they could have edited a lot better. Like there was this one part in a narrative where it just lasts too long, like with Severino dancing with his mother. And they could have like, I don't know, shortened that part a little bit and it shifts to um, this other character watching them and him like filming them. And then by filming them, I wish that they could have cut it differently so that, um, I don't know, like th there's just a lot there that could have been seamlessly done overall that would have cut the runtime but wouldn't affect the play of the narrative itself like i just felt like some scenes felt longer than they should have um and it was just nice that the narrative itself is compelling enough for you to not want to just fast forward through those scenes but i think they could have just done a lot better job in terms of just cutting some of the filler or lingering moments so that didn't really impact as much as like the rest of the other scenes in the narrative um so what do i give this film i mean obviously i like how it is um i think it's also a good metaphor in terms of just generational trauma um in a way that the like the burden of this is passed from one point to another and it's clearly seen from these just these three timelines that were presented to us in the narrative um it also presents how you know sometimes this twisted love like our perception of love whether it's familiar love or romantic love or all these other things or camaraderie and all these other things which is very prominent in human nature um can reach a level of toxicity that is beyond redemption and that's another common theme that is presented in this film that is not too in your face but you can clearly feel it through the theme without the characters kind of like explaining it to you up front i think in that sense um this film did a good job in terms of like explaining some of the ironies and at the same time the like familiar narratives of real horror you know real fears that manifest into something that is a little bit more fictitious or a little bit more bordering on 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 you know something more mm, tangible or visible um or representative of a certain way like metaphorical in some sense of way but you can also sense like the realism behind it again when it comes to generational trauma or just being too fixated about a loved one and just their welfare to the point that it's not good for them anymore all those other things which is again an, a really good way of how, why horror films work is because once you capture that idea of tapping into people's natural fears and el elaborating on them to the point of fictionalizing it in an effective manner then that's that makes for a good horror film and again overall was it completely horrifying i wouldn't say so but again i just haven't really found a horror film that has scared the shit out of me for the last decade or so um but i actually find this really exciting which is quite interesting because i haven't really found a lot of horror films that really excite me um and when i find one that do um i just want to make a point to like talk about it at least um so i'm not sure at which level would it be if i talk about it on a horror movie loving perspective like for people who enjoy this type of genre because again that's just not something that I personally find scary um, in a sense but so I can't rate the scare factor but is it an enjoyable film I would say yes again there are some moments that lingered a little bit too long than they should have but um, overall like I think it makes for a decent film and it's actually quite interesting and again um, it's it's the fact for me I like it when films kind of like put a spotlight on a certain factual event that probably not a lot of people know of or are from aren't familiar with and it might spark 
some interest for them to look into that. I don't know if it's just the nerd or the geek in me, but I like films like that that kind of like compel me to Google what actually happened. Um, and I think Maliari did just that. Like I, I prevented myself from reading actual reviews so I can give my own opinion of it straightforwardly. But I did look up some historical references for this one. So yeah. Um, but yeah, but overall, do I recommend it? I think it's on Netflix. Go check it out. And I think it's an actually nice, decent horror film compared to recent ones that we've been getting so far. <laughs> um, and it's just an interesting watch altogether, at least in my opinion. But yeah, so as usual, tell me down in the comments below. Do you like this film? Have you seen it? Are you planning to see it? What are your thoughts after you've seen it? All these other things. Do you have any other recommendations for me? Not necessarily just Filipino films, but again, as I mentioned, I'll also talk about other Asian films, movies, dramas, genres as well. So, and always looking for something new to watch. So tell me down in the comments below everything. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel and you would want to hear more from me, please hit subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I'll be seeing you again soon in a new video.